the sun has finally broken through the rain clouds and we are over at Branson's today taking out this the Honda Rebel 1100 for 2024 obviously this is the kind of stripped back bobber style cruiser how does it handle how does it perform yeah we're gonna have Honda reliability but do we get that cruiser feel well let's find out one thing I do like before we even get going is the side entry for the key something that I think it just has a nice little touch. I'm 6'1 and 115 kilos, and sitting on this bike, I feel really low. The seat is low, my knees feel quite high, the pegs feel quite underneath me. Obviously with Harley and half of their cruisers, they've got forward mounting pegs, and that kind of negates that cramped feeling. Unfortunately, with the pegs almost so far underneath me, It's not very comfortable, I must say, for a man of my size, my structure. Just feels to be a lot of kind of uh, pressure on my hips. So right away, for me, for long distance, this bike is not hitting the uh, hitting that tick list for me. Short riders, this might be the one for you. Let's move into the engine then of the Rebel. Obviously, this is the 1100. Now, numbers wise, it is not very impressive, should we say. Brake horsepower coming in at 81, and we have 98 newton meters of torque. In the realms of litre bikes, that's low, it is low. But then again, the Africa Twin with the 1100 has uh, still only got 100 uh, brake horsepower. So, Honda, don't worry about producing large numbers. I am in standard mode at the minute throttle response is quite choppy it is very on off talking about the standard mode there are four different rider modes and that's going to be standard rain sport and user and to adjust them it's as simple as pushing the mode button until you get onto the little arrow next to the p and then you're going to push the select button up and down once you've gotten the one you want stop pressing come off the throttle give it a few seconds and then it activates that sport mode with the whole ergonomics triangle that I'm in, when I have to change gears, I feel like I'm having to lift my foot, especially obviously going down the gear. Not particularly comfortable. We are in sport mode now. Throw is still on off snatchy. But there's a nice punch to it. And this is why it's not always down to the numbers. You don't always need 160 brake horsepower. This feels punchy enough for this cruiser style platform it was raining this morning the ground is damp so it'll take a little bit easy obviously you're on a new bike as well only six miles down so it's obviously brand new tires brakes everything carried on looking at some of the other electronics then start at the front of the bike we do have leds all round on this bike we've got a circular headlight i think it actually looks really nice We've also keeping that circular theme. We've got circular indicators front and wee, wee, front and rear. That was the horn. Wouldn't be a video by me if we didn't have a horn and D. And what's nice to see is even as a cruiser, we've still got cruise control. Activated by pushing the grey button with your thumb. And then from there you've got the set and the reset up and down. Pretty much like most other cruise control. Just gonna put it. Yay! Horn again. I'm gonna blame the winter gloves. That's that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm in rain mode now. Ah, oh, there's a massive difference, even between just rain and standard. Full throttle. It is very smooth, very docile. The power really builds into it slowly. Throttle is still a little bit snatchy. It's not as snatchy definitely calm down a little bit and then user is where you can then go on and change the parameters between the power the traction and the engine braking engine braking on this is set to one out of three sport and standard are two so potentially coming off the throttle it's the engine braking so in user if you wanted less engine braking hopefully a little bit less snatchy put that down to one nice wide handlebars they're at a comfortable distance from my top half and I am sat upright. Obviously we've got a tiny little screen 
above the LED headlights. To be honest, it's just a sport screen, makes it look good. Doesn't do anything for the wind. If you did want wind protection, there is a touring pack available. I mean, even if you want to buy the whole pack, you could just buy the screen. It adds like a, a cowl uh, as well as the screen to the front. I'll try and get a video on the screen now. But a touring pack will come with saddlebags as well, if you chose that. This bike does have, I believe it's called either the street or the sport pack. I'll put it on the screen properly. Uh, and that little cowl at the front does come with that street pack. If not, you're just going to get this standard LED headlight at the front with nothing above it. The other things on the street pack is going to be the tank protectors from the crotch and then left and right sides of your legs and then at the seat as well. Nice little cross hatch stitching to it and it's quite gelled, it's quite padded compared to the standard one. Now, I'm not sure why Honda have done this, but again, the same as last year, this bike has anti wheelie. To be honest, if you're wheeling this, I mean, you're skilled, you probably meant to. So, uh, yeah, you can turn off anti wheelie, but most of us ain't never going to be able to wheelie this thing. Now, looking at the pricing for this, it's actually quite interesting. So, Honda are doing a deal to get rid of some of their new stock from 23. I believe the old stock from 23, brand new, Honda are going to do them for £8,999. So, £9,000 for this bike. That's, that's a good price, especially when you look at the, the other cruiser market of Harley. You can double that easily. And I said it's interesting because Honda haven't actually released the price for this one for the 2024 yet. Because I believe it's not actually dropped to where you can go in and buy it and walk away with it. This is just the demo, getting ready for when the bike's actually released. I believe, I don't work for Honda. So, a pinch of salt. So I don't know the price of the brand new one, but I do know the price, like I said, nine grand for the last one. And then with the street or sport pack, whichever one it is, that's another 550 pounds. I said the seat felt low because it is only 700 mil. So pretty much anyone can fit on this bike. Me, I think, like I said, the biggest problem is, is when you start getting taller, you are gonna find issues. Everyone's different, I'm not very flexible. So could just be my fault. Now, before we get into the twisties and we start putting this for its pace, I want you guys to hit that subscribe button. You gotta help me get to 10,000 subs within 2024. That is my goal for this year. And hopefully I can get there. But I'm not gonna do it without you guys hitting that subscribe button. 92% of you aren't subscribed, but you're watching the videos. Help a brother out, push the button. It means very little to you guys. Just means you get notified of all the content that I release. Anyway, pitch sail over. Let's get on and do some riding. Hold up. Wait a minute. Whilst we're poodling through this little village, the brakes are pretty good. The front is actually quite nice and sharp for a single disc. So we've got a single 330 at the front and a single 256 mil at the rear. I'll test it when we get into the twisties a little bit faster. See how they perform. But at the minute, like I said, they're still breaking in. But yeah, one finger action for this kind of slower city speeds is absolutely fine. Oh yes, give me that sun. I'm not going to lie, the throttle on off, that first 10% pick up, it's kind of doing my nutting. It's alright when you're accelerating. If I owned this bike, I would definitely have to get the ECU flashed. Get it tuned, get rid of that, that jerkiness. Ugh, jerky. I tell you what, this thing has got more than enough punch. Plenty of get up and go, even with this little 81 brake horsepower engine. I do have it in sport mode. Yeah, brakes are decent, even just for the singles at the front. Singles? Single at the front. One thing to note with the cruise control, I believe you need to be in fourth gear or higher and then over 30 miles an hour for it to activate. Yeah, third gear, nothing. Fourth gear, there you go. And 30 is as low as it goes as well. And here we go then, a little bit dirty, but you can just about see the nice metallic paintwork in that sun. Blacked out fairing, blacked exhaust. We've got dual piggyback suspension either side. Nice sleek design from the rear. And this is that uh, extra comfort seat I was on about. That comes with this pack. As you can see, it does have this kind of shape to it. I must say, uh, for me and my weight, this wasn't particularly comfortable. My coccyx was starting to hurt just after a half hour on this. 
simple design, nothing special, white on black. Remember this is the front car that comes with a pack, LED headlights, and this front mud guard with the Rebel stripe on it, that is also included in the pack. Another nice feature, bloody bright today. Another nice feature is actually under the seat, uh, if you pop it up, there's not only storage, but also a USB-C charging point. So if you wanted, you could put your phone or camera batteries or whatever under there whilst you're riding to have it charge. It's a really basic bike, not much else to talk about. Apart from this bad hair day, GoPro let me down, but hey, sun's out, I'm on a bike. Let's go and enjoy it. Yet another GoPro failure. So I'm not actually quite sure at which point the GoPro failed on the way over here, but I believe it was kind of just after the twisties. And all I said is actually in the twisties, it did handle still quite nicely, even with this kind of big, fat, wide cruiser style tyres. These are the pads I was on about. That comes in the pack. Well, let's get on the road. Hope GoPro doesn't fail us again. And finish off the review. So I've currently sent the GoPro 10 back because it's continuously failing. turns off saying it's low battery even though you just put a fresh battery in so I've got the 9 on at the minute but this thing froze done something I've never seen before and I was gonna give the 10 one last chance but I don't know I feel like I just need to cut ties the GoPro head on over to either the DJI Action 4 or the new Insta Ace Pro I just want something when it costs you four or five hundred pounds, when you turn it on, just to stay on. And you spend hundred pounds on a media mod. I just want the audio to record. I feel like I'm not asking too much. Stay on when I turn you on and record the audio. That is it. GoPro manages to fail. Why do we still buy GoPro? Answer me that. Anyway, GoPro ran over, back onto the Rebel. A kind of summary then, throttle is snatchy, would need kind of uh, getting the ECU flashed just to sort that out because it does me in just going ugh, ugh, ugh. The seat, even though this is like the comfort seat, it's still not very comfortable. Oh, I'm a heavier guy, I've got a day sack on with some camera gear in. But after 30 minutes of riding to that stop, my coccyx was hurting, my bum was hurting, and I was ready to get off. Knees to hip ratio, knees are too high, hips too low. I don't like the triangle of my lower half. So, overall, I personally would not buy this bike. Those are some things that I don't like with it. Some people might not worry about the throttle. Some people might be smaller. So the triangle is different, so they fit this bike better. Just ergonomically, it just doesn't do it for me. But that shouldn't detract from the engine. The engine is actually a really nice peppy engine. I must say, I am surprised what Honda get out of their engines for such little numbers. Oh, I forgot to do my chin strap up. <laughs> you silly boy. Pull over, safety first guys, safety first. Oh, I can't wait till the summer's here. I'm not wearing my winter gloves, my thick coat with the thermal liner in. I've got the line, thermal lining, as in thermal bottoms on. Oh. Also, the little popper come off there, so I can't pop it on. That's annoyed me. It's a single popper, but in my head, this helmet's broken. I need a new helmet. I want textiles ready for when I do some more touring and the UK when the weather's tonk. I want some adventure boots so I can do some more off-roading because at the minute I've just got the waterproof RST trainers I want a road helmet but I also want an adventure style helmet just because I've got a GSA be rude not to there's a lot of things I need slash one probably more one than need but yay can confirm the horn does work Because it's got no form of proper wind protection, the wind is just even, hits you across the chest. No strange buffeting, 
handles nicely, the suspension is okay. Especially with me, heavier onset on it, it's not going to be set off my weight. And it does handle nicely. So overall, all those things together, that means it's a pretty good bike. Unfortunately, like I've said multiple times, the ergonomics just aren't for me. But nine grand for a brand new 23 plate in the realms of bikes nowadays, that's pretty good. Last thing to mention, I believe there's going to be a couple of different colour options, uh, like a gunmetal grey and a blue. Me personally, the darker gunmetal grey uh, is, I think, a better colour. Well guys, don't forget, help the channel out, subscribe. I'm hopefully going to get on some drier days because I'm done with winter. As always, thank you very much for watching. Big shout out to Branson's for lending me this today. And I'll be taking out all of their latest demos that come in very soon. Nothing else to say, but until the next one, ride safe.